It's harvest time at Swanson Island, British Columbia, where Stolt Sea Farms raises premium quality salmon for the international seafood market. Keeping up with the world's demand for seafood is a tough job. We consume it by the ton, 100 million tons per year to be exact. And by the year 2000, our global annual seafood consumption is expected to reach 120 million tons. That's a tall order to fill. And though we've always considered the ocean's supply to be limitless, we're beginning to realize that Mother Nature is having a hard time keeping up. As fishing seasons grow shorter, the market is depending more and more on farms like this one for fresh seafood. Aquaculture is the farming of aquatic organisms, including fish, shellfish, and aquatic plants. Little more than a hobby 15 years ago, today the industry in Canada is worth more than $300 million. And it is capable of doubling in size over the coming decade. Aquaculture is a major supplier of salmon, trout, oysters, mussels, and clams. And it's an industry that has set down roots in every province in Canada. This is a farm, and like any other farm, it's not a job. It's a way of life. And I love what I'm doing. I love working on the water, and I love working with the fish that are in our pants here. Techniques for delivering fish to market are expanding, from baiting hook and net, to include sophisticated cultivation. And as with any type of food cultivation, the farmer has a large degree of control over the quality of the product. Two and a half years ago, these salmon started out as eggs in a hatchery like this one, owned by Connors Brothers Limited. For the first year, they remain in fresh water and are fed a nutritionally balanced diet to ensure optimal health and growth. Within a year, they become smolts and are ready to be transferred into ocean cages where they'll be fed and cared for for another 12 to 18 months. These salmon are now ready to be harvested and processed for the highly competitive international salmon market. When they get to the processing plant, they got several people that handle the fish. Our fish are very well handled. They're babied on my sites. We babied these fish. It's not just my responsibility. It's everybody's responsibility that works for me to ensure that these fish are the highest quality fish that go to any market, BC, Canada, United States, Japan, all over the world. Farm-raised salmon is the largest agri-food export product produced in both British Columbia and New Brunswick. This processing plant was built in Campbell River, British Columbia, specifically to receive and process farmed salmon. Campbell River is a perfect example of the potential that salmon farming holds for coastal communities. In Campbell River last year, over 400 people were employed directly or indirectly in salmon farming. That contributed about $12.2 million to the local economy just in wages and benefits alone. If you take into account all the surplus spending that took place, that figure is over $30 million, a significant contribution to a coastal community. Because it's a relatively new industry, aquaculture is attracting young people who are looking to the future, planning for long-term careers. There's very few people that have been in the industry more than five or ten years. So for myself, I can be here five or ten years and be looking at a management position or uh, even assistant manager within a couple of years. I already have a lot of friends who are at that position right now and 19 years old, assistant manager, 24 manager. It, the list goes on. It's a very young industry. It's beautiful scenery. I mean, every morning you come out to work and you kind of just open your eyes and take a look around. The eagles are flying overhead. Sometimes some whales are going past. You, you can't beat it, really. It's a beautiful environment. And it's that beautiful environment that is essential to raising healthy farmed fish. 
The success of the industry depends on clean water. Aquaculture has developed under the watchful and protective eye of an environmentally conscious public. As much as anyone, this industry wants to ensure that the environment remains clean, healthy, and productive. Success depends on it. There are three fundamental fears that most environmentalists have about salmon farming. One is the genetic component that the wild salmon and farm salmon will mix. Uh, the other is non-indigenous species such as Atlantic salmon in the Pacific. They think that there's no reason to have non-indigenous species in these waters. And the third is more environmental degradation. There's been a lot of studies done worldwide by various federal, provincial bodies, you name it, it's been done. And the conclusions at the end of that uh, is that done properly, salmon farming is a sustainable, environmentally friendly industry. I would encourage environmentalists who are opposed to our industry to actually come out and have a look at, it, at our farms. We encourage it all the time. Uh, we've always been open and we've said, come out, have a look, L look underneath our pens if you're concerned, uh, have a look at the fish, have a look at the whole operation. Canada's east coast has suffered great economic hardship from the closure of fisheries. By turning to aquaculture for species such as cod, we could give the wild stocks a chance to replenish while providing unemployed fishermen with work that will make use of their existing skills and tools. As everyone knows, Newfoundland has a tremendously chronically high unemployment problem. Now it's compounded by having a moratorium where there's 30,000 people out of work. Newfoundland has like 17,000 kilometers of coastline, most of it very sparsely populated, which means very clean water. We have people who obviously have a, an understanding of how to handle fish, and we also have what is now obviously a, a, a crying need to find other sources of employment for all these unemployed people. Two techniques that we've developed to raise farm cod. One was to take small wild cod and to just further grow it. It's a very quick process. Most of that cod will double its weight in about 100 days. So from a fisherman and plant worker's point of view, it's a nice way to earn family income and do it from June until October, November in any given year. Uh, obviously, with now no access to wild small cod, we have to find another solution, and the solution is obviously a hatchery. Uh, we have 80,000 pounds of our own brood stock. We have started our own cod hatchery. A lot of persons want to stick to the old system, chasing around wild fish that's not going to be there for a long period of time. And I suppose it's like farming. Out west, I guess, when the first tractor showed up in Saskatchewan, I guess a lot of people were saying, hey, that's not going to work, we're going to stick to our horses. But uh, a lot of things, as, as things change and modernize, then people have to be adept. Current trends and developments indicate that aquaculture production will continue to grow. In Canada alone, the industry has grown 24-fold in less than a decade. Today, Canadian aquaculture generates more than $300 million in revenue and provides jobs for more than 5,200 Canadians. And the industry has spurred the growth of a dynamic supplies and services sector to cater to the specific needs of aquaculturists. At a time when globalization of markets is posing challenges for resource-based industries, aquaculture is emerging as an exciting and sustainable new contender. It is an environmentally sound technique for producing high-quality fish and shellfish, and it's a proven source of employment and economic growth in our coastal and rural communities. With our abundant coastlines, skilled workers, and advanced technologies, we can't afford not to farm our lakes and oceans. We could be a world leader. We have one of the best coastlines on the planet. And, you know, we could maximize it. We could farm 12 months a year in the ocean without problems. And we, we have to be able to tap into that. The wild fishery isn't going isn't to supply, you know, Canada and the rest of the world. You know, we have to look at farming. I definitely believe that the industry has a wonderful future and it requires a determination and awareness on the part of the public to make sure that it is going to be carried on into the future and, and make sure provisions are made 
so that we can continue farming in the sea.